G'day. Today we're doing a bit of work on a T4 transporter, Volkswagen transporter. A similar transmission in the Caravals, very similar to the O1M transmission as well. This one's the O1P. And I'm not going to explain the specific issue we've got here. I'm just going to show you how to do all the checks. Now obviously we've done a, a scan on it, couldn't find an obvious electrical fault. And now what we've done is we've removed the valve body. Just be very careful when you're removing these harness connectors. I've got another video that shows you how to make a little tool there to pop them out without damaging them. If you just do it with a screwdriver you'll break the little clips and then you'll have to use a little a tie down strip or something to hold it in so be aware of that so we've got the valve body off and what we're going to do is do an air pressure test on the case and here we have the ATSG diagram for the case pressure passages or ports and here are the locations where to check K clutches K1, K2, K3 your brake which is also a clutch B2 and B1 we'll start off with the K3 over here so I've got this little plastic tube you can see that very thin plastic tube and I just slide that in because there's a little step in that port you can see it there's a step in the port so we have to put a tube there to get past that little step we push that in there like that and we're on the the K3 K3 position and what we do is shove that air pressure there I'll just wait for the traffic to pass hope you can hear this on the camera you can hear that clutch applying properly so that one's okay. Now we'll move on to the K2, which is this port here. Okay. And to test that one, I've got this flat piece of rubber. You can see there. And what I do is I just plug, because it's an irregular shape hole or port, you need to block that up. So you've got to push up pretty hard, and that's the one we're going to pressure test now. We're on the K2. I'm just going to support with my fingers there over that port. Now I can hear the clunk there, but I can also hear the, the air leaking there, so you've got to be aware of that. I just can't push it up hard enough. Try it that way. So the K2 appears to be okay. Now we're going to do this irregular shaped port there for the K1 clutch. And that'll be this one here. Sort of looks like a, a shoe. Now that one, it is applying. But you can also hear there's a slight air sound there. You have to also bear in mind that air is a lot thinner than oil. So you are going to have a slight air leak, which is okay. But you can hear that clutch applying. We have the B2, which is that one there. That one there. Between the K1, the, the shoe-shaped one, and the other one. But what we need to do, because there's a little step in there, you when you put your little air pressure tool on there it'll just be on that step so you need to put a little tube in there to test it or if you can poke something in there deeper to air pressure test it now a lot of that's leaking around that air gun there but you can hear there's a nice crisp shift there and you also need to bear in mind that Sometimes on these ports there's quite a few sealing joints you know, it has to go past sealing rings and bushings, all that sort of thing. It will or it can leak air 
at those positions as well. So you've got so many sealing joints before the pressure actually gets to that piston to apply that clutch pack. And finally we've got the B1 clutch. And that one's got the little valve there. That one goes on a support there and there'll be a little, little O-ring on the inside of it as well. So we need to take that little valve out to air pressure to test that one. So you just carefully lever it out. You be careful not to damage any of this surface here. You also want to try and move that wiring or harness strap there as little as possible, especially if you're reusing your old one. And there we go. So that valve has a little o-ring there that seals off a little port and there's a little spring that pushes up on it. So we're going to end up getting the another different uh, air gun and poke it into the hole right in there. You, you won't be able to see it, it'll be too dark. And we'll just test that one. Got this air gun and that goes right in there. You can see how deep it goes in. It's actually that deep. Two and a half, three inches and we just blast a bit of air in there and that one's sealing really well it's actually blowing the oil out from behind the piston back up out through this port and I can hear it applying so that one's working good as well we're on the ATSG manual the application chart what clutches are applied in what gears Low sprag, that's basically a one-way clutch. And then you've got the torque converter clutch, which is inside the torque converter. Now, still on the ATSG manual, and this shows the location and the reference of which solenoid is what on the valve body. You'll just note this one and this one, they're both the same. They're the same solenoids, and then you've got five solenoids that are the same as well. You can't mix them up. The actual body of the solenoid is different size in those. And here we have just the location of the pins, and which pins do what. Solenoid application chart there. And also a description of what all the, the different solenoids do still on the ATSG manual and you can see just the position of all the valves and the springs in the valve body and here's one that with the valve body it's rotated also note that some O1Ps the spring isn't on this side it's on that side this this manual is actually an O1M but they're a very similar valve body now the reference is the Sonex, and you can see it actually names what all the valves are there. And on Sonex you can actually get what's called a zip kit. And what they do, what that means is that these plugs here, because you've constantly got pressure operating on that valve, these little end plugs, they wear out because they're, they're sort of locked on a... Oh, there's like a little tang there that rotates in the bore and it locks it. There's no pin or anything like that. But after a period of time of operation, those and the movement of that little plastic plug over here. These ones here. You can test them. You just press it with your finger if you, if you can easily. You can see that one's moving quite easily. You can get a kit and you replace these plugs and that'll reseal that part or zip it up they call it a zip kit the pressure in in the actual valve body it won't be leaking out through those plugs this one here there's a little on the pressure regulator solenoid you need a special tool you can get them from Sonax they look like that that what they do is they allow you to press down, they've, oh, they've got like a little press down bit on it 
and it just allows you to it's that one there so it's got a little ratchet there it'll just allow you to press that little tang there so you can actually undo it if you try and undo it without pressing it down you'll just break the little tangs you need to buy a whole new end plug and there's some aluminium plugs there you can get a screwdriver and just see if they're sealed up as well and they're that one's pretty tight and that one's pretty tight as well you can see there's obviously something gone amiss in there and it has created a fair bit of metallic debris so that's probably possibly jammed up some of the valves in the valve body or contaminated the solenoids or both now just one other thing to be aware of when you're testing uh, the resistance of solenoids most manuals will give you a specific temperature range which is usually 68 degrees Fahrenheit or that equates to 20 degrees Celsius so as solenoid temperature goes up as they warm up the resistance goes up as well so there's no specific uh, resistance range it's all got to do with temperature as well uh, there's a fair bit of confusion with that so today we're on right here we're on 16 degrees here in the assembly room and I'll just show you that if I get there and measure these 50 say 56.2 we've got 56.4 we've got 55.5 56.3 57.5 these are the that solenoid there and that one they're the same but they're different from these ones so that one's open circuit something with me multimeter there you go plug was out we've got 6.3 and 6.6.2 so now if I I'm going to warm up the whole valve body slightly and we'll re-measure that just to show you that if you if you're looking at you know if your shop manual says they should be between 5 and 6 ohm and you measure it at 7 ohms or something like that it doesn't mean that they're faulty it just means that maybe the ambient temperature of, of the air has gone up so the resistance will go up and we've got you can see the little laser pointer there 14.5 so it's pretty coolish sort of a day here and that's celsius 15 15 degrees magic of television it hopefully warmed it up a little bit only warmed it up five degrees now yeah, before at 15 degrees we had this one was 56.2 got 58.7 now we had 56.4 on that one got 58.8 we had 55.5 on that one we got 57.9 we had 56.3 we got 58.6 over here at 15 degrees we had 57.5 we got 59.9 now this one here that's different we had 6.3 we got not much 6.6 .6, and we had 6.2 we had 6.7 i'll put in the oven a bit longer and see again what increase we get we're on that's dropped down a bit but ideally you want to do it at, at room temperature which is supposed to be 20 degrees celsius or 68 fahrenheit back in the oven and back out of the oven again 49 degrees 40 it was 50 when i pulled it out anyway 50, 50 odd degrees 15 degrees we had 56.2 at 20 degrees we had 58.7 at 
and at 50 degrees we have 69.2 we had 56.4 then 58.8 and now we've got 69.4 this one we had 55.5 at 15 at 20 we had 57.9 and now at 50 degrees we've got 68.4 this one we had 56.3 at 15 degrees 58.6 at 20 and at 50 we've got 69.1 and this one over here we had 57.5 59.9 and 70.6 this one we had 6.3 at 15 at 20 we had 6.6 .6, and now at 50 we've got 7.3 so you can see that one's just a, a slight rise and the same as this one at 15 we had 6.2 at 20 we had 6.7 and we've got 7.3 so that tells us that they do seem to be all similar in the ballpark as the temperature increases and quite often that's the issue at room temperature if you test these solenoids they'll appear to be okay and they fail when they warm up they go open circuit or the resistance gradient goes up too much uh, within that temperature range so the next stage we would do would be to flush these solenoids now we have a flushing machine which is one of these machines and what we do we initially demagnetize the solenoid flush it out without any electrical power going through it that'll allow as much of that demagnetized metallic debris to be flushed out you can't just flush it out with air you need some sort of material to carry it out which is usually a solvent or oil and then we'll put them through these machines here that's just flushing it's not testing if the solenoid is leaking or not so what you can do is definitely you can demagnetize it with one of those little jiggers they work all right you want to get the rotate the solenoid and demagnetize it from as many angles as you can before you flush it out and every time you energize it or put power through it to test it you need to demagnetize it again if you want to try and flush it because you're magnetizing that metallic debris inside and that just sticks to everything the solenoid generally de-energized it's not magnetized it so the metallic swarf or debris in there gets magnetized these you can get them on online they're not very expensive um, and we also have a much larger one that we use so if you're doing this in your workshop like i explained you can warm them up um, ideally you want to not cook them like warm them up too hot we've got a special oven where it's thermostatically controlled it won't just keep heating everything up um, like a normal oven till it gets too too hot in temperature and the idea is is to actually test it at room temperature test it at about operating temperature which is about 65 say 70 degrees and just make sure that the the solenoid resistances haven't gone too far out of whack or gone open circuit at higher temperature the leak testing is a little bit more difficult you need a special tool for each solenoid to to be able to test it some solenoids are normally open normally closed so there is also a different technique you've got a some of them you test if they're leaking with no no power some you test for no leak when they're energized or you've got power going through and another thing just to make a note of if a if you are somehow pressure testing it the voltage that we use is about eight and a half nine volts a battery is considered completely flat at 10.5 volts so if it's operating and sealing properly at at about nine volts it's definitely going to operate at operating um, voltage which is hopefully over 
13.6 volts. A normal car battery uh, working with the alternator will supply about up to 14.6 volts. So you want to always test it at the lower end of the scale. So 9 volts, even if you wanted to, you could test it at 10.5 volts. If it's still operating and sealing properly at that, then it would mean that the solenoid's good. Another thing to listen or look out for is when you are actually operating the solenoid, that the little valve isn't getting stuck you know, just periodically or, or just for a split second that's not getting stuck and then operating, that would indicate that you haven't flushed it out enough and there's still some of that magnetised debris in the solenoid. The idea is to get as much of that out as possible to get the solenoid operating nice and smoothly like it should be. These solenoids are just on-off solenoids, so it doesn't really matter. Some of the linear solenoids, you need to have a nice even increase in amperage when the solenoid is operating. And that comes into another form of testing where you can't just test it with voltage. You actually have the voltage set and you ramp up or ramp down the amperage to get a nice even uh, movement of the the valve because it's actually metering oil flow anyway i hope all that makes sense don't forget to like and subscribe any questions or comments leave them in the section below and don't forget to throw us a beer if any of this information helps or saves you a few dollars or time or or whatever it does take a while to make these videos. A few beers is much appreciated and keeps us motivated. Thank you for watching.